Hey there, I'm taking a classic tune and we're going to talk a little bit about how to play it and some ideas you can use with this tune or any tune to make uh, the chord changes easier and the right hand picking easier. So first of all, we all know how to play this song, we, um, or at least most of us do, but if you don't, I'll run through the chords really quickly. The idea being in this song, understanding the rhythmic motive that you're playing the whole time, which the song is in the key of 6-8, so it's one, da da bum 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 da 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 dun 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 You gotta feel that. It's an eighth note, two sixteenth notes, an eighth note, and then three more eighth notes. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's important to feel and, and to know. If you want the sheet music to this, if you happen to not know all the chords, just let me know and I'll uh, send you a link to where you can get the tabs that I did. Now here's the idea. In between each chord, play the third string open. It's something that if you uh, listen really closely to the animals recording, you can hear that. The third string kind of pops open and it gives it a really neat sound. Let me kind of demonstrate that. So I'll start on the fifth string with my A minor. that C, go to the D, here on the last eighth note of each chord I'm playing as an open G and it's a little thing but that little eighth note that one little moment gives you enough time to smoothly get to the next chord so if you're first starting to play and you're having a hard time getting into your next chord and you're playing <laughs> think it's really choppy by backing it up just a little bit, teaching yourself to leave that chord to prepare the next chord. It's an awesome trick. Um, it's a great thing about the guitar. That open G, you know, I'm popping it so it's kind of obtrusive and it sticks out, but if you play it quietly, you barely notice it and it almost adds a little bit of color um, and makes that sound actually cooler. So all the way through the progression. So the chords of the song, A minor, C, D, F major, I'm purposely playing this F major with a uh, fourth string root, A minor, E major, to A minor. Now that's basically the second half of the verse and the intro, so um, you know the chords are all still the same, there's, there's nothing different thrown at you. So as you go through that progression, let's talk about which roots, um, which string the roots of the chords are on. The A minor has a fifth string root. So you play five, four, three, two, one, two, three, third string open. The C has the same thing. The D major and the F major are both fourth string roots. So when this one's a little tricky because you have to pick four, three, two, one, one, two, three to double that first string. It's F major is the same way. The A minor and the E major what you should do for the E majors, that's a sixth string root, is I'd jump the fifth string. Play six, four, three, two, one, two, three. That way you'll always get back to the third string open to give you something consistent in your practice. You know, so whether you play this song already or not, this can really help you um, improve upon it. I mean, you know, and everybody loves this song. You get a good singer, it's pretty fun to play. Uh, now, so check out this. Right hand picking, we'll just do the A minor and then you can kind of figure it out from there. The idea, you know, we're usually picking notes. We like to bring our pick at a little bit of an angle, you know, and we come relatively um, straight across the string um, with, a, with a sweep, and this is kind of a good first introduction to sweeping. What it will do is we'll kind of angle the pick down just a little bit. I mean, we're talking a tiny bit. You know, people get all over the top here. What you want to do if you're directionally picking across the strings is just create a little less friction by angling the pick down. That way the pick won't get stuck in the strings. So for all of these arpeggios, I would probably pick down, 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 up, up. And notice I come up, I angle the pick back up. Just a little bit. So I'm using this idea like turning the screwdriver, right? So I'm going down. I'm doing you know, very little, that's the thing. I mean, everybody overdoes it. It's a tiny little thing, just so instead of coming straight up and down the string, you haven't given a little bit of angle, which will greatly um, decrease the amount of force it takes to push through that pick or through that string. 
So anyway, I hope these ideas help you. Um, try putting in that third open string and getting those transitions smooth, and then you can get it cooking. <laughs> You know, next thing you know, you'll be working on Paganese 24th violin caprice. So, anyway, good luck with that. Thanks.